looking at Mohan while you collect all his food and drinks and place them in Rohini's hands. Oh Devi, when can I see your lowered blushing face affectionately Looking at Mohan, while you collect all his food and drinks and place them in Rohini's hands. Notes. In the previous verse, it was described how Radha and Mohan felt boundless bliss when they saw each other in the kitchen. In this way, even the kitchen had become a rasavati, a delicious place. When will you thus fully immerse me in an ocean of bliss? The devotee thinks, I want to become happy by making you happy. Everyone in the world wants to be happy. And even in the pure loving devotees, some extremely subtle desire for personal happiness dwells. I want to be happy by rendering devotional service. I want to relish the flavors of devotion, etc. Only the maid servants of Sri Radha are completely free from this. They are the summit of selflessness. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas practice the Upasana of Radha Dasya. The aspirant should advance by thinking what will make them happy. Bhajan cannot take place as long as there is the stain of personal desire. While doing bhajan, it is not easy to give up the desire for distinction. Why would Sadhu Prem, beautiful love, come in the heart where the dog-eating woman of the desire for distinction still dwells? One should fear the desire for distinction. Madhavendra Puri fled out of fear of distinction. Still, reputation automatically comes along with the lover of Mohan. A devotee who still has personal desires cannot possibly fathom the ecstasy there is in selfless worship. In selfish worship there is misery and as long as there is still a whiff of desire, the true joy of devotion Hindi 
In selfish worship, there is misery. And as long as there is still a whiff of desire, a true joy of devotion cannot be attained. After Swamini finishes cooking, she takes rest. The Kinkaris change her clothes, wipe her hands, feet and body with a wet towel and begin to fan her while the Nishta brings a glass of syrup saying Priyasaki drink a glass of syrup mixed with nectar while Swamini enjoys the drink she closes her eyes then the Kinkaris serve her palm Meanwhile, everyone sits down to eat. Swamini pulls her veil over her forehead and hands Mother Rohini the different dishes meant to be served from the storehouse. Mohan is enchanted. As soon as he sees Swamini and Mother Yashoda, becomes worried when she sees that he seemingly loses his appetite. How can I describe all the different dishes Mother Rohini and Radhika have cooked? Look at that fragrant rice and these vegetable preparations. Even the Creator cannot imagine how many dishes Mother Rohini is serving? I see that Mohan has fainted after seeing Radha's face. Nandarani Yashoda becomes very upset when she sees Mohan's lack of appetite. So she says, Rasika Radha has brought camphor and malati for you. I tell you truly, if you don't eat, Rai will not come anymore. Vishaka, Lalitha and Kundalata have all hinted that to me. When Nagara Shekhar, Mohan, the king of amorous heroes, hears these words from his mother, he fills himself up to the neck with food and drinks just to please Rai. Swamini enters the dining room, her head lowered out of shyness. Balaram and Mother Yashoda are there after all. Srimati blushes out of shyness. And she tries to make her bangles and ankle belts jingle as softly as possible while she brings the full dishes in and takes the empty dishes back out again. Her pace is as nectarian as the dishes that she brings in. How carefully she carries Mohan's dishes. Rasa Sanchaya means she serves rasa, spiritual flavors. The dishes of Mohan, Subal, the Sakis, and the Manjaris, taste of amorous love. And the dishes of Balaram, Rohini, and Yashoda taste of fraternal and parental love. What a wonderful meal. Rohini Nandan Balaram 
sits on Muhammad's right, Subal sits on his left, and Mother Mangal faces him as he eats. Yashoda points at different dishes with her index finger and says, O oh son, this preparation is very nice. That one is so tasty. This one is very sweet. The expert joker Madhumangal, seeing Mohan's weak appetite, tells Queen Yashoda, Ma, Mohan doesn't eat anything. Just give him some light food, like rice and sabji, and give me the rich food cooked in ghee. I will nourish him by embracing him after I fill up my own belly. Everyone laughs after hearing Madhu Mangal's joking words while Mohan relishes a new infusion of sweet flavors while viewing Radhika's face. Sri Radha's face is blossoming. Swamini is known as Maryadavati, a girl who neatly follows the etiquette. All the superiors are present, but still, can she survive without glancing at least slightly at Mohan? After all, all her activities are aimed at Mohan's satisfaction. Devi means playful girl, a girl who playfully enchants Mohan in the way she serves the meal. Madhava means the lord of limitless beauty. The palace of Rasa is built on the foundation of Tattva. She is the root energy of the original person, Mohan, the fountainhead of all consorts of the Lord. Chaitanya Charitamrita states, there are three different kinds of consorts of Mohan. Firstly, the goddess of fortune, and then the queen of Dwaraka. The greatest consorts though are the Braja Gopis. All these consorts emanate from Sri Radhika alone. Just as all the Lord's dissensions emanate from Mohan, similarly all the Lord's consorts emanate from Sri Radha, their original source. The goddess of fortune emanate from her Vaibhava Vilas, manifestation of prowess. And the queens belong to the Vaibhava Prakasha group, meaning about the same. There are differences, however, in the Braja Gopis' forms and natures. They are the phalanx of Radha, and they are the cause of transcendental flavors. Without the presence of many lovers, there can be no rasika bliss. Therefore, there are many Gopis who are helping Radha and Mohan in their pastimes. In Braja, they have different moods and flavors and they make Mohan relish the flavors of pastimes like the Rasalila. A flood awakens on the ocean of sweetness when Sri Radha is seen and Radhika's maidservants relish that sight. 
they nourish each other's beauty. That is why Sri Radha is addressed as Devi, the most beautiful and effulgent one. With some trick, Mohan is able to look at Swamini without being noticed by others. Swamini also blinks at Mohan's sweet face while she hands the plates to Mother Rohini, thinking, how beautiful is my Pritam? After eating one sweet, Mohan says, Ma, this sweet is amazing. At that time, Mother Rohini is serving elsewhere. So Mother Yashoda says, Radhe, bring that sandesh here. Swamini brings it and Mother Yashoda says, Come, give it to him. Just as Swamini shyly wants to put the sweet on Mohan's plate, Mohan stretches out his open hand to receive it from her. That is a sign of affection. And Srimati blushes of shyness when he does that. How beautiful is her shyly blushing, blooming face at that time. Tulasi relishes the sweetness and greatly desires to see the blossoming lotus face again. O oh, Radhe, according to your own wish, you prepare Mohan's dishes like sweet rice that can be chewed, sucked, licked, or drunk with your own hands and place them on jeweled plates. With tear-filled eyes, you hand these plates to Rohini Devi while singing Mohan's name at every step. Everyone's eyes will be pleased by seeing such a lot of delicious dishes and everyone's bodies will be startled by ecstasy. In this way, O Navagori, I will fill up my eyes with the vision of your face that blooms like millions of moons. Vinapa Kusumanjali is a treasure of worship and the elixir for the minds of the Rasikas. This is the end of the source, Gurudev. Rathe, rathe.